My son was in Canada that day. Can you prove that? I received a letter on April 14th, same day as the assassination, sent from Montreal. Where is this letter? I don't know. I'm done. Done defending your lies. You're so blind with hatred, Mr. Aiken, you can't even see the truth. Yes, my son hated the North, we all did. How can a Southerner feel anything but bitterness towards your side? But my son did not conspire to kill your president. He conspired to kidnap him. Hi, I'm Arthur Ryan, entertainment correspondent to the news. And I'm Dave Bjerkren, managing editor of the News of Delaware County. That was a scene from The Conspirator, the latest film directed by Robert Redford. It features a heartfelt performance by Robin Wright, set against the waning days of the Civil War. It's 1865 and Abraham Lincoln has been assassinated. The government is eager to put this tragic event behind it. And so it wants a scapegoat and a quick trial. Unfortunately, the only known assassin, John Wilkes Booth, has been killed in a barn fire. And so the government tries to round up a group of men they believe conspired to kill the president. Included in the arrests is one woman, Mary Surratt, who owned the boarding house where the men met. She's defended by a young Union soldier, Frederick Aiken, played by James McAvoy. Tell us, whose side are you on? I'm trying to defend you. By suggesting I trade my son for myself? You're trying to save you, Mr. Aiken. I wish I could give you what you need. I truly do. But if you want out, you'll have to find another way. It is her military trial that is the focus of the film. As it explores the issue, does a nation's security outweigh one person's rights? And I thought that that was where the movie was trying to go. And I appreciated what it was trying to do. But I was more captivated by the relationship between Mary Surratt and the Union soldier, her attorney. I, I just thought that brought a lot of emotional appeal to a picture that could have been a little dry. Sure, and it was yeah. definitely about uh, the relationship, almost a mother-son uh, relationship between the two. Right. Um, it really focuses on the inner battles that McAvoy's character, uh, Frederick Aiken, is going through. Here's this former Union soldier who um, was wounded in the war and now has to defend this uh, woman who not only supported uh, the Southern cause, but is now being accused of conspirating to uh, assassinate the President of the United States. Yeah, He's also yeah. battling her herself when he finally realizes the only way to defend her is to shift the focus from her onto the guilt, the possible guilt, of her son, John Surratt Jr. And so he's now becomes he's battling his client as well on how to actually defend her. Right, right. And it's interesting, he was brought in by a southern senator who wanted to make sure that, that her rights were being protected. Right, right, right. But he went in with a lot of misgivings. This was a southern woman, uh, a self-proclaimed confederate. Sure. Uh, he had just uh, battled uh, the South. Right, and had and, been and wounded in the war. And wounded in, yeah. in, in the battle. Sure, so, sure. you know, he brought his own prejudices to it. Director Robert Redford, I think, really makes uh, the argument to be whether or not trying someone who is accused of conspiracy against our nation uh, should be given a trial in a military a court or a, a civil court. And that really becomes the main issue of the movie. And of course, with the events right. in the last 10 years, it, it's very easy to to think about Gitmo and what went on in that right. situation and the whole idea of history repeating itself. And I think that's what really I, Redford is pointing out with this. I film. think that's what drew him to the script in the yeah. first place. Mm -hmm. I think he saw this and he said, oh, sure. there's parallels here sure. to what we're going through now. Right. And he right. wanted to show that. And I think the way the film seems to position itself, I think it makes a strong case that it should be a civil trial. Um, while historically the Mary's involvement in the conspiracy is still kind of an open question, I think the film leans toward her actually being innocent and being railroaded by the government for a quick and easy right, solution. Right. And, and I think there'll be people who take issue with that. I also um, thought, too, uh, the, the character of Edward Stanton, the uh, Secretary of War, who really uh, who was the, the closest friend to Lincoln, who really pushed for the military tribunal, his motives being in the film, um, were to uh, you know bring the uh, Union back together. It was right after the war, uh, and to do away with the whole conspiracy uh, thing rather quickly, just sort of brush it under the right. rug. Uh, I 
I, what I liked about the way it was handled, I mean, Kevin Klein is terrific uh, in the yeah, role. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, today's politics, it's very easy to just demonize those who you don't agree with. And I, I felt that they, he was, Redford was never demonizing um, Stanton for his... his he um, provided him with motive. Motive, like, yes. There was a reason. He, he was right. doing it supposedly for the greater good. Oh, good, right, exactly. Um, he still came off to be, you know, a little tyrannical. I mm. mean, he, he immediately took charge of the right. government after right. the assassination right. and, right. Um, you know, um, and there's certainly been echoes of that in our more recent history. Sure. With, sure. It's not justice you're after, it's revenge. I would never go to such lengths out of vengeance, but to ensure the survival of this nation, I would do anything. Mary Surratt was a party to the most grievous crime in our history. Necessity demands that she be given a swift, sure, and harsh sentence. I, too, hold sacred our rights, Counselor, but they count not at all if our nation ceases to exist. But I thought that there's a postscript at the end of the film, without giving too much away, that comes right at the end, right before the end credits, that I thought was really brilliant on his part, because I thought the postscript that has to do with her son and what happened afterwards, again, I don't want to give too much away, could really be used by either side of the argument to mm. defend their position, if you think about it, if you mm. really think hard about it. Um, they could say, well, see, the, this one was tried in this case, this one was tried in that court, and see the difference, and that proves my case. No, it proves my case. You know, so I thought that was brave on his part to include that at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I don't think he was doing that to make it look like, oh, see, I'm not just the big liberal filmmaker making you know, my liberal uh, film. Right, right, and I, you know, and I know he's he's said that he he wants us to sort of learn from history, and that this right. is a way <clears throat> for us to see that these kinds of events and incidents have happened in the past, yes, and exactly. see how our nation's dealt with sure. it in the past. Sure. It has a great cast, and besides Kevin Klein and um, Robin uh, Wright, uh, uh, Tom Wilkinson, uh, yeah, terrific as the Southern Senator, Southern from, Senator from Maryland, who starts the defense of Surratt, and um, Denny Houston is the prosecutor who uh, prosecutes the case for the military. Uh, both of them are no strangers to historical dramas. They were both in uh, John Adams for HBO. And then it was really nice to see um, uh, John Cullum pop up. Uh, John Cullum from 1776 and Northern Exposure pops up in an unbilled cameo uh, as this 11th hour uh, judge who mm -hmm. uh, sort of is asked to step in at the end of uh, when the case is nearing its end. Um, so yeah, they all fit very well with the time period. Um, I still got to go back though to, to Robin Wright's portrayal. Oh, she's wonderful. As, yeah, right. um, it's very stoic. I, very, you know, you get the sense that she's going to do anything to defend, defend her son. And I think um, she brought the emotional base to the film that it needed. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it would have just been a, you know, a docudrama right, of right. a historical sure. event. Sure. Uh, she made it real for me. I thought, yeah, oh, okay, he's, this so. is a real person. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A little enig enigmatic. You never really figure out exactly right. who she is, totally. Right, right. But, uh, it's a very um, smart picture. Uh, it really is. I, I, I think, again, people who love history are really going to like this film and find it thrilling. I think others mm -hmm. who maybe be bored by history should stay away. Um, this is a very deliberately paced film. Yeah. And so, th you know, those who are uh, more um, accustomed to films like River Runs Through It, another Redford film that, that is a very slow, deliberately paced film, although still a wonderful movie, might find uh, this movie moving a little too slow for them as well. Yeah, I mean, they put a lot of detail in because they want it to be a historically accurate rendering. Um, and I did feel that there was a little bit of, it was a little muddy, and I thought that slowed it down a little in, in the first half of the picture, but I thought it... It clarified itself and it became a very strong picture from the, the, the second half okay. all the way to the end. Yeah. Uh, I had no problem, you know, at that point. So, so, so yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I suggest that people go see it if they get a chance and uh, read our full reviews in this week's edition of the News of Delaware County. Yeah.